Welcome to Musicians vs. the World, the podcast where we explore aspects of music and musician life that may not have been covered in music school. I am your host, Christine Smith. Tormod Ringness is a Norwegian sound designer and sound editor. He is an avid collaborator and sought after artist for much of his contributions, expertise, and precise dictations in the sound design community. His most recent project, Songs of Earth, was recently selected as Norway's entry into the international feature category for the Oscars. Also upcoming for Tormod is Young Woman and the Sea, the biographical drama films Lily James and Daisy Ridley. His past projects also include Maleficent, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, Academy Award winning animated feature Flea, partnerships with German filmmakers Thomas Aslan and Wim Wenders, video games like Battlefield 2042, and Tribeca 2023 selection Leroy with Steve Zahn. So Tormod, thank you so much for being here and welcome to Musicians vs. the World. Thank you, and thank you for having me. I'm just, I'm so excited to chat with you. I was just watching Songs of Earth, and um, my goodness, it's just a beautiful, beautiful film. And your work in the sound in that film was just breathtaking. So oh, thank, thank you, you for coming to chat with yeah, me. Thank you. About your work and your <laughs> the way that you do things. Um, yeah. Just as a quick refresher for my listeners, um, what exactly is sound design? Oh, uh, for me, sound design is... From, is actually telling the story, like the director story with sound. So for me, sound design could be also kind of music, but uh, when you, it's not like, for often when we talk about sound design, we talk about a large explosion or this, like specific things, but for me it's more like using sound as storytelling. So you can, the, the element of sound and um, together with music, you kind of make that story, uh, all like the audio story. Mm, very much so. Um, and there are so many instances of this in Songs of Earth that I can't wait to talk about. <laughs> but before we do, um, I want to know your background a little bit. How did you get into sound design? Yeah, <clears throat> like as I always said, like most of the sound design, I started with music when I was young and uh, played in band. I was a bass player so they were, and in a rock band, so it was a little bit uh, boring. So I started, started mixing <laughs> the, <laughs> the music and, of course, produce it. And then I also worked in a local TV station and uh, <clears throat> and I was a huge fan of uh, interested in film. Um, I watched so many films when I was young. So those two things and I started quite early with my friends uh, um, shooting like short films with eight super eight um after like uh, later we did the uh, v like vhs um, short films so we just play with it and for me the sound on because what all the things we could do with sound because often there was limited budget, but uh, with sound and music, we can really upper the level and tell the story. So that was kind of how I went into it. And of course, uh, I also had a father that supported me. So he was always supporting me to go that direction. So that was nice. And then, of course, film school and and I had a mentor. And then we had then, then a lot of Norwegian films and uh, Scandinavian after that. Yeah. Mm. So what's something that you learned from that mentor, that first mentor? So he was so into sound and he, he did so many films and he, we traveled with him to Skywalker Sound that for me when I was young was, uh, that's a, a company in San Francisco doing all mm. the Star Wars and all those films. Mentor, but he was uh, uh, head of all the sound designers in actually in Scandinavia. So he, he was wow. really good for me, it was perfect. Wow, and so you were able to go to Skywalker Studios and and see everything. Yeah, that's a long and doing Atmos and all of this now. That's a long mm. way from VHS. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> that's um. So when when you were making these films with your friends, just on Super Eight and VHS, yeah, were you interested in the sound back then, or yeah, was definitely. it? No, we, yeah. because what I actually did was like. Um, we cut the film, 8mm Super 8, together, and then we, we didn't have sound on the film, so I had to reproduce everything. I did that on a cassette deck with a 4-track uh, cassette deck, uh, put all these things, music, and we did all. And then when we played it for the class at school, we ha I had to just push both buttons at the same time, and hopefully that was in sync. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was kind of the first uh, uh, track laying, and, um, and that was fun because you can see... And, I, I, and that was kind of my 
thing when I, in the early age, when I watched films, how much the sound could kind of affect me on uh, emotion. Um, uh, for example, E.T. You get the, you, you can see it was a puppy, or uh, but you, at at the same time the the voice was so authentic, so real, so you just believed it. So I, I felt that sound can make things feel real, but also get you into the next level of um, emotions and uh, fantasy and all those things. Yeah, it really can. And my goodness, I'm so excited. Let's talk about Sounds of Earth, Songs of Earth, excuse me, because I feel like this is an incredible film because the sound is kind of a main character in this in this film. And the filmmaker uh, said that when she was six years old, her father took her to a glacier in the valley where he grew up. And they sat there in the glacier and listened to the sound of the wind entering the crevices and becoming tonal. And I asked dad, is there an orchestra playing in the glacier? And he replied, do you hear that too? And my idea was to create a symphony of the earth's primordial forces and sounds. So it's like the filmmaker came into this knowing that the sound was going to be the star. How... Yeah. <laughs> what an experience for you to yeah. have a film like a filmmaker believe the same things you do like how did you yeah, get involved with that the thing is that uh, this is the first film I've done I'm done with Margaret Olin um, I've been lucky with working with various projects and like from low budget as you mentioned low budget Norwegian films up to like uh, big films but I always strive to find projects where you can tell story uh, with sound and uh, all, I loved working with films and documentary that has kind of a meaning, that has a purpose or has something to tell. So when uh, Market uh, came to me and with this idea, it was before shooting and she said, I want to do it like a symphony. Like she didn't want to have it as a title, but the thing was like sound symphony or the nature symphony, something she, she got because her experience as a child was going out with her father, uh, listen to all those things, um, all those uh, sounds that were very in, in, in the nature, in the mountain. It was, <clears throat> and actually the good, good, the, the good thing was when we started before, before the shooting, so we can really plan it and the whole process. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that uh, how it became so good has been a long process of uh, over a couple of years and with uh, really great collaboration uh, with between all of us. So you got to go out and record with her. Yeah, but we had one uh, really great recordist on set called Andreas Lindberg, who went with her like the, for the whole year or because it was shot in five seasons. Uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, like the whole four season plus one, spring two times. Uh, but um, so he went with her and did amazing recordings. Uh, yeah. He definitely did record specific things as well. But so, but uh, he kind of followed her, of course, record all the um, voices of uh, her father and mother, but also the nature. So, but then I listened to it and I went up and did some more recordings. So it was a great collaboration. And the idea we started, the, my, my guess idea was to, that all the nature sound is music. So her idea was uh, making music out of all the sounds that you are hearing. So we record all those stuff, uh, put all those together, um, uh, find like try to find the voice of the nature, the rhythm, the pulse, everything. And we collect all those things, picked out all those things, and then we sent it to Rebecca Karjor, who's the um, composer, amazing composer. Uh, mm -hmm. And she listened to all those sounds that we had been recorded, and she got a small, a small orchestra uh, to improvise over the sound that they are hearing. So they just oh. improvised, trying to re replicate what they are listening to in the nature, and then no she, yeah, and then she kind of out of that, she sent all those to me, of course, and we started playing with the sounds that we recorded, and we blend it, some, and you can't hear when it's actually real sound and when it's the instrument, 
and then uh, she took all those things all the thing that they've improvised and she started to make those um, scores that you can hear that are more like um, scores but that was made after yeah, the improvisation so she kind of got um, inspired of what they're doing and then she wrote it so so that i feel that it's one of the things that really works really good it's like you you can't hear when it's yes. sound or when the music starts so Oh, wow. So we were like small, small, tiny uh, instrument up to like the big orchestra, and it, it just works. Uh, I think I believe it works quite good. <laughs> I believe it works quite good too. <laughs> it was incredible. It does. It feels like the it feels like the music is growing out of out yeah. of the nature sounds. Mm -hmm. So that's so it's so I didn't realize that those were improvised some and I can I'm thinking back to some of the sections where you can hear just one instrument here, one maybe one instrument mm -hmm. on the right, one instrument on the left, mm -hmm. and then maybe there's a B in the background or something. I don't know, mm -hmm. but it, it just mixes really yeah, well. Yeah, and you can hear because uh, there are some sounds that uh, the story is like if the weather changes, you can hear the like the waterfall are kind of yeah. banging uh, like a rhythm into the um, uh, the mountain, like the wall. Uh, so yes. it makes like boom, boom, boom. And that's mm -hmm. we that's thing we recorded, but we kind of enhanced it with the. Uh, with the instruments. Oh, so that kind of, that bass, that thumping when they're when they're mm -hmm. I guess when it's the, they're showing the glacier and the ice, that thumping is something that you recorded and then just kind of engineered to make it sound more music uh, yeah. instrumental like. Yeah. So oh, okay. uh, so we always try to find and and we did some we did other things. We we lowered microphone like uh, to between between the. Um, what call it uh, uh, the cracks or cra oh, what do you call it? Yeah, the cracks in the ice, right? The yeah. So lower like um, we'll call it 30 meters or 100 feet down and we just started to listen and we thought that uh, when it, we thought it would be kind of windy or something there, but just suddenly we start to hear a rhythm like tick, 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 and we still not, I think it was uh, the ice is melting, it was not dripping, it was like tick, 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 and it was constantly Ooh. in beat and it was uh, the rhythm and and that was like uh, 100 feet down in the glacier. And that's kind of, oh, this is the thing. So we have used that many places. So we kind of took all the sequences uh, we had. Uh, we, we split the film into sequences. So we did spring, uh, winter, uh, autumn, uh, summer. In the, so we, kinda, we started, uh, he sent me, the Misha, who is the editor, sent me some sequence that you have done. I put some sound on it we, and some of the inspiration or some of the things that Rebecca had recorded. And we sent it back to the editor. He kind of adjusted it and we could go like forth and back. So we kind of, so it all felt like one piece. Uh, so there are like some places is glacier are um, bouldering, crackling, it goes over to kind of breathing heartbeats uh, close mm -hmm. and that's the kind of rhythm we uh, we try to find that the nature own voice kind of so yeah yeah well one of the sequences that i loved that i really felt like the nature sounds really sounded like a symphony was there was a um a sequence that starts with the father's ear so it's like the visuals telling us listen with him and then it takes us up a waterfall and the sound grows and it changes in texture and it changes and it seems like it's om I can't I don't hmm I don't want to say melodic but it definitely has like a path and a momentum that we're supposed to be following mm. and I just mm. listened to that and I said 
oh my goodness, I get it. Like, <laughs> I get what this film is trying to do. And that's incredible. It's only eight minutes into the film. And yeah. after I watched that sequence, I was like, this is amazing. What yeah. you did was amazing. I mean, thank you. It's actually no music before like 25 minutes into the film, but there's lots of music elements and there's lots of music elements from Rebecca before, but when the scores comes in, it's like in 25, but we wanted to make that melodic and subjective because he's, you can, is close to his ears and it's not what you actually hear there, but how he kind of experienced the things. So, so that's, that's was the important thing that that was kind of the approach of the, the scene and, and I set it up there because we're going to go back to all the uh, several places that, and so we had, I had to break down because again, the waterfall is, it uh, often became, becomes a little bit too noisy, like uh, pink because it's, so I mm -hmm. had to find all those details and play it together as as mm, as you do when you put together music. So like water drops in different tones, and you uh, you kind of you start minimal and then you grow up to bigger with more things. But you, you want it to be in tone, and then I of I always love using sound also in this this harmony. So really like you can use all the kind of um, tricks you do when you do films, like when you make score, the scary or that. You can do, you can use that in sound as well. And that's that's uh, for me is um, so cool because you you don't recognize it. You just feel it because when you use sound as music to tell if something is uh, happy or sad or or scary, then you it becomes something that you just feel. It's just not yeah. pushed on you. So, um, uh, so and uh, what we kind of did uh, when we started uh, after she's been out recording, and we started to editing the film, we just sat and listened to the greatest um, uh, several symphonies. How the symphonies was built up. So with the director really? and the editor and uh, just to kind of figure out how we could kind of um, modeling the both visual and sound wise to to make this and of course and then you have of course um, the father in at the same time in this um, environment mm -hmm. so it's not only sound and music but you also have a great story about life and the, the simpleness and the mindfulness. And as uh, <clears throat> Margaret always say that when you go out to nature, you also go into your kind of soul. So that was kind of the meditation. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so oh, I was beautiful. amazing, amazing experience. <laughs> To do this. That must it must have been <laughs> it must have been such a beautiful thing to to work on that. Um, as far as storytelling, like you were saying, this beautiful story about life and about living in this wonderful place. There's a there's a moment where the sound actually takes over the story, and um, partway through, uh, the father tells the story of a landslide, and obviously they can't show the landslide, so the visual is just a flock of crows, mm. but the sound mm. tells you exactly what's happening. Mm. That is a very powerful mm. sequence. Now, mm. how how did that sequence come about? Actually, that was the most tricky one because how far should we go? And it was, uh, and, and it was so, and we had, we also, when we did edit, it was uh, lots of forward and back with the editor because we should we go that far and does it impact and does it work? So I just made that sound without seeing the picture at all and just uh, how I, how I like how I felt um, if you are experiencing it. So. I never experienced it, but uh, uh, and, and, and the thing living in that place is the most beautiful place in Norway, and uh, we have lots of beautiful places in Norway, but also a really dangerous place. Like the nature are so tough; you can just the weather can change into dramatic in kind of a couple of hours. Um, and if you are in the mountain, then you can 
uh, it could be quite dangerous. And you have um, it's been so many avalanches. Uh, yeah. um, so it's um, it's tough. So uh, it was just a good collaboration, and we um, just had to work with it and try it and then and I, I i'm really happy that it works and then you just stop and you just quiet like and often when it's cut sync time things like this happen it's often people say that's often really quiet after and then it comes so so um, um that was kind of my approach on that one yeah and again, it's very, very musical because oftentimes in music, you'll have something very overwhelming music wise, and then there will be yeah. silence or there no. will be. But actually, our afterwards. improvising, the, 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 the composer also did some improvising there. So they're under, but you, you can't almost not hear it, but there are music there. There are music wise <laughs> kind of into the, the sound design. <laughs> So, and there's so many places, I uh, promise, uh, and that was the, the nice thing that uh, Rebecca also said, when I listen to the film, I can't, I can't tell where, uh, where my music is, because there are, there, of course, when you have the big scores, you can hear it, but uh, there are so many places, so mm -hmm. we hide it, and there's another sequence when you can see the wind have taken all the trees. You can hear the wind mm -hmm. are blowing, but that are also mm -hmm. mixed with uh, lots of strings are playing, um, uh, well, and flutes and like, but just <laughs> windy. <laughs> so, so uh, it's been uh, so. We, uh, so that's the whole process was like uh, the director's idea of making sound music as the title, songs of music. A symphony out of the sound uh, in the nature and there. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And it like, absolutely and is. Yeah. Mm. And kind of, and her approach is like make uh, a film about the nature and a focus about the life. So we can, you just want to be there and uh, or take care of it without pushing the moral, pushing, uh, you know, we mm. have to save the planet. Just tell how beautiful it is and how how the life if you if you enhance the nature how is how important it is for you as a person to be in the nature not because we are always dressing always running to the next job and and for me it's like uh, if like thinking back now i should be more out there recording even more i should i should have been with them more but uh, of course i had several projects uh, luckily i have andreas with me he did so many good things what a beautiful experience that must have been mm. so um i i see that it is um it was selected to be the international feature for the oscar so congratulations yeah thanks on that thank you yeah the Norwegian um, submission so both I mean, uh, both the international and they are running for the documentary as well so hopefully <laughs> Oh really? For two? Mm. Oh wow! Yeah. I hope. Well, I hope it wins. I, I love the film, and I just, mm. I really do hope it wins. Yeah. And I, I like the way that you were involved from the very beginning. And you have um, a four-step process that you'd like yeah. for sound mm. to be. Do you want to kind of go over those those processes that you uh, would like to see? Mm, for me, it's like <clears throat> on all the films I worked on. For me, it's like I always said, it's four places where you can really do great sound design. And for me, as I told in the beginning, sound design is telling sound, telling story with sound, not making mm -hmm. great. Uh, of course, you want all of us do great sound effects as well, but uh, it's more important to tell a story. And um, for me, then it's like the four. It's like to be in the project early as possible and even if the uh, uh, is maybe more important if there are low budget because then they, they, there's so many things you can do and for me that the first of the, that's the four steps is uh, in the script that you are a part and you discuss the, the before shooting you do the script and you discuss the film and what you can do and an uh, example of that I uh, worked on a film with Martin Tildum he had done imitation game passenger and lately now silo he did a film, Norwegian film called Headhunters, and that was kind of his um, go-to, like uh, the film that uh, he became famous of. But uh, 
that was adapted from a book and was had lots of voiceover. And like the script had voiceover through the entire kind of film. But uh, Morton didn't want to have voiceover. He wanted to find a way to get rid of voiceover and tell it with picture and sound and music instead. So we sat down with a script, the DOP, the editor and me, and the, uh, me <laughs> as a sound designer, and try to figure out how to solve all this scene without telling the with voiceover. voiceover. You just just feel that the character because voiceover they are often in their monologue. Right. So we, we try to figure out ways to tell it with sound, um, subjective sound, and cut it or and film it that we g- could get rid of all those um, voiceover. And we actually managed to do it and was very lucky. So I've, th- that's for me. And it's uh, so important that we they when they write the script they think about sound and of course music and um, and the next step is before shooting because often when you have want to have windy or uh, or rainy or something that you want to you sh- should see it visual as well so you have to talk with them. Uh, uh, set uh, other the people that um, what call it, uh, the creative the set manager or to kind of help you or collaborate how you can do all those things that is not uh, what you kind of do afterwards that you it's a part of the plan mm-hmm. to, um, and of course the third thing is uh, quite easy is uh, to get as best recording of the voice as possible uh, to help. Right. I'm always when they, I'm not, I'm never out recording. I'm not good at that, but uh, always helping them uh, when the record is on set to get the best kind of uh, arrive. I talk with the director that it's important, so important that they get good quality of the recordings. And for me, the last part is in the editor because there you this in when you edit the film that that's the place where you set all the rhythm, the pace, and the mu- uh, the, the everything. So, f- to for me to be a part of the editing is so important because then because often when you if you're not part, of the sometimes they just put um, music from other films. They just put in things, and often if they're not using sound or the right sound during the editing, they often cut it quite uh, fast dialogue wise. But sometimes you need to have space for emotion and for uh, things. So so that's kind of my, as a storytelling point of sound design, that's kind of the last place you can really do great sound design is actually when you cut the film. <laughs> so <laughs> luckily when we do, well, so everything else is just to, um, make it uh, better or f- I know, uh, when I work together with an editor we're not doing kind of high fidelity sound we just talk we just think about um, um, storytelling so we can put in stuff that we're going to change but the rhythm and the ideas are talked about and uh, uh, for me it's like when I start working with a director hopefully uh, early in the process I try to be to ask him as many questions as possible to be kind of a not stupid uh, audience, but uh, I can see what you're actually seeing. But what you what are you actually meaning? That's important for me to to kind. Of, so we seldom talk about sound, like specific sound. We're more into what do you want with this scene and what do you want with this character and what do you want to, to do. So so and then I can oh, okay. Then I understand. I can use my experience and. And, then, and for me, it's like the collaboration between editor and the composer and uh, me is uh, so important. Mm-hmm. Our, our, film, our filmmaker is usually open to having you involved so early? Yeah, maybe not. Uh, often, uh, uh, it always depends on the time and... But uh, often they are they are open for it. Uh, but often the producer uh, feels it's going to be so much ex- more expensive that I'm in early, so I'm, I'm <laughs> so early in. But uh, I, try, I try to teach them that or tell them that uh, you're going to save a lot of money 
if you and it's gonna be a better film and when the film are cut or done cut the sound is almost there and you can do screenings and you can uh, have you can really because some if you don't use music and write music and the sound during the cut um it's and you have to change it uh, we have this um, phrase called avid syndrome it's like this is a perfect <laughs> the film is perfect when it's uh, in the edit because they have used the film they like music with Hans Zimmer or like yeah it works perfectly <laughs> because it's that you, you have the emotion from all the films and then we start working we need to change it and it's almost impossible to change like iconic music or right is uh, into into so as early as you can get into what you're gonna do and at, i believe like sound like sound and music are so important for the film for the storytelling mm -hmm. so, hmm. so yeah i bet a lot of the composers are glad that you are telling them the importance of that as well yeah, yeah. it makes mm. their job easier too i'm sure yeah, yeah. 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 Um, i like to i like the collaboration and often i like because especially in some of the Norwegian director or some directors are not so used to work with composer um, and you have of course you have film composer and you have musicians a different uh, approach to so for me I like to be the binary or uh, the glue between the composer and the director sometimes just to yeah just to translate sometimes <laughs> <laughs> so they can help understand each other yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good but oh, often Dorman, it works thank you quite good. Hmm? oh often it works yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's good well Torma, this is i have so enjoyed talking mm, with you, you and speaking with thank you, you. Mm. um as we wrap up what advice do you have for people who are wanting to become sound designers or to do what you do i think first of all uh, when I started, it was like, I just went out and record a lot of stuff because it, then you can build up your own kind of uh, library and uh, because and you get so into uh, exploring sounds and things. Watch lots of movie. For me, I had a kind of a clear goal. I set up a clear goal as like a 5, 10, 15 years. And to, uh, to be the best, you should just do lots of films, do lots of short films, do stuff, uh, think about as, um, I, I taught myself, I, I said myself, um, if I want to be the best or like working with the best, don't be the best, working with the best, I need to think as a top athlete, you know, and I need to just practice, practice and watch lots of films. And for me, it's like, and but at the same time, it's so important to do other things like go out and um, go to theater, do go into nature, <laughs> just listen to all the sounds, and be the go to get get inspired and um, watch lots of films, watch lots of classics, uh, see the early, because when you did early films, you don't have all those tools. You just need to be quite uh, specific when you worked on sound, like my, all the. Martin Scorsese, Raging Bull, all those films, the early films that you you should definitely watch them. So that's yeah. that's my advice. <laughs> that's wonderful advice. You are just amazing. Thank you so much for being here. I Thank have you. so enjoyed chatting with you. I appreciate your time. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>